Hello, everybody, I'm, and welcome back to another episode of United We Stand, Divided We Podcast. I am Robert from the U.S., and we have with us uh, Lionel from uh, where am I from? Toronto. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just enjoying my hot chocolate out of my beautiful uh, <laughs> United We Stand, Divided We Podcast mug, which is actually of our original design, and you know, we'll make very stylish. It. And Robert, yes, as you can see, a lot of work we are changing um, you know, some some updates. We realized that some of the uh, wording was kind of hard to read. So I think this is a much better image. So hopefully uh, you all think so, too. Um, you had any comments? Let me know. And is it available for them to purchase? Absolutely. Uh, as I was about to say, I'll have links in this. this, this I'll have links in this description. This one I here, talk. <laughs> this one here, that so one. you can go to the store and buy one if you want one. T shirts, <laughs> we'll give that a bit <laughs> too. So, <laughs> and uh, sweatshirts or hoodies, which are which is it? Which is we got going? Uh, oh, there's yeah. sweatshirts, hoodies, long sleeve shirts, short sleeve shirts, mugs, tees, plethora. Yeah, mm -hmm. yep, yep, yep. Oh, uh, excellent. Fantastic. That, stuff. by the way, is whether you're Canadian or American, you can love it. And some future designs that uh, we haven't gone through yet, uh, where we might have some themes specifically relating to Canada or the U.S., but they're very similar, and it, it's just a theme. The whole Canada-U.S. being friends, not enemies thing. Uh, we're <laughs> yes. going to brainstorm that over the over the coming weeks, and 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 hopefully later in the summer, we have something to unveil for you. For that. Yeah, and, and yeah, like everything it. that you do uh, just helps support the channel, so we greatly appreciate it. So obviously, last week, for those who watched, uh, we had our special guest, my son. Uh, he loved it. It was a great episode, kind of long, but you know, it's uh, when you have a lot to talk about. It's uh, I'm a long winded very, guy, anyways, so it's easy he, to do. He's a very smart man. Uh, it was a pleasure having him on. Um, uh, and we we used to we used to play uh, on Google graveyard stadia uh <laughs> uh that's, that's a, that's wildlands actually. with with uh with him as well so uh it was the first yeah. time i've ever actually seen him i want i can't see him in person because i'm still thousands of miles away here or hundreds right. whatever um yeah. but it was a pleasure to finally get the chance to meet him uh, he's very smart and extremely well traveled and and uh yeah so yeah, when he has something to say, uh, it, it's nice to listen because he's got a very youthful but serious experience in life already. So. Yeah, he has some amazing experiences. Uh, he's have he has more experiences like that than I do, and I'm fifty something yeah. years old. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so I'm super know. proud of him. He's done a fantastic <laughs> job in getting his life together, way better than I did at his age. <laughs> which is what we want. We want our kids to do better than we did. So I uh, super proud of him. He's 100%. Awesome. Yeah. Absolutely. And I can't wait to get both my boys out in Germany and, and go on that trip. That's going to be a spectacular trip. Yeah. I'm That's not cool. at all jealous of that. Really looking forward to it. But uh, yeah, so anyway. on, <clears throat> excuse me, onto our first subject. This is a little bit of public service announcement, and this is mainly for our U S listeners and watchers. Um, a, hacker group called Lockbit um, has claimed that there's no proof yet. I haven't seen any actual admission by the Federal Reserve, but they have claimed to have breached terabytes of data of U.S. citizen information, addresses, phone numbers, obviously social security numbers. It's the Federal Reserve. So, mm -hmm. Just keep an eye out. And, and you know, we had an episode a while back that talked about security, and you just can't ignore it. You have to make sure, lock your credit bureaus, put your two-factor authentication on, just protect yourself, uh, because this is just the world we live in now. We just have to kind of keep the doors locked in the, uh, you know, keep keep a vigilant eye. So be on the lookout, just FYI. Not been confirmed, but... Where there's smoke, there's fire. So be aware. And next on the PSA, just real quick, again, this is a U.S. thing that the United States government has issued a immediate patch requirement for all government 
employees that use pixels because of a zero day that is being exploited. Um, so again, hit that update button. Even if you have to tap it 14 times sometimes, make sure you do those updates because these zero days, I can tell you that I, from experience, and Lionel can, can you know attest to it as well, yeah. Google, Samsung, they're really good about taking care of these zero days quickly. So uh, ex extremely good. Um, the the thing is, is uh, reality is technically you should be updated already. The the only issues uh, in regards to this particular update that needed to be out was T Mobile, I believe it was Ver and Verizon, if I'm not mistaken, that had the delay. But theirs is already now rolled out. You should have that update. If you don't have it yeah. now, like like Robert said. Mash the button. <laughs> or, so, boom, yeah. Probably right, or maybe you're doing yeah, it like yeah, this. Yeah. I don't. Even, but yeah. mash that button. Get it. Get it done. Uh, it, it's not likely that you haven't got it yet, uh, because you know I, I keep up to date on this. I I check out a, a lot of things like Facebook groups uh, for for Pixel owners and, uh, yeah. and other Google stuff to do with that. And there's always some people saying, how come I don't have the update yet? How come I don't have the update yet? And usually those are people who are complaining uh, on day one, uh, an yeah. hour into it being released. Hey, right, right, right. Uh, but, uh, but then, you know, sometimes when you start to see three weeks later, somebody doesn't have it. And you're like, wait a minute. Now, something is absolutely off about this. Uh, um, and, and that's if most people have it and some don't. But it was known that Verizon yes. and and uh, T-Mobile users did have the delay on theirs, and they never told us what it was. Yeah, so. and I'm not going to get into details about these two um, issues. Uh, just be alert. But if you want more information, hit us up in the comments section. I'll be happy to get back to you, and I'll give you some links and all that you can go read it for yourself and just make sure that you are covered. Hit that update button. So. Those are my two public service announcements of today. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so <laughs> forget the, now that we've gone pa past the public service announcements. <laughs> Those are important things. <laughs> the, yeah, uh, we, we have something uh, absolutely <laughs> really fascinating. Speaking of pixel owners. Uh, and those who haven't but have considered it or those who haven't and haven't yet considered it. Uh, Google, uh, much like Apple um, and Samsung, have used a almost dead-on date every year since the first Pixel, uh, save for one year where it was about two and a half, almost, almost three weeks later than usual, and you still ended <clears> up <throat> having to wait three more weeks to actually get the device um, when they launched their new series. I think that was the Pixel 4 that that happened with, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, um, cool. but Every other one has been somewhere between October 4th and October 11th or something. Usually 4th, 5th, or 6th. Um, this year, uh, we were just told just yesterday that it is August 13th is the Pixel reveal. Now, we're, we're, we're not guaranteed 100%, but it's pretty, it's pretty obvious because they, they actually also shared on... Forgive me, I, I shouldn't have to say it like this. They put on X... Um, formerly Twitter, <laughs> so and if you don't know that yet, you're still living in Twitter. Good for <laughs> yeah. you. <Wake> anyway, <laughs> yes, <laughs> they 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 put on there uh, um, a very short teaser video, which is, in my opinion, the best teaser that they did since the very first Pixel. Uh, the very first Pixel one is the best phone teaser I have ever seen from any brand ever. Um. So it didn't really show much. It was very, very dark. And they just kind of showed the outline as, as the light went around the outline. It's slightly across the camera bar. Yeah. And then it just put the date entirely in Roman numerals. So. So the question, because I don't remember. Yeah. Um, isn't the last beta typically published in August? Or is it coming? The last out? beta in is July? typically published somewhere between July the middle of July and the very beginning of August. There has been a couple of years where the last beta didn't even happen until the end of the first week 
of August one yeah, year. I remember in that. The middle so they, of August. They better get year. that last update out then. But keep in mind, they also, until two years ago, they were putting out the newer version of Android uh, in at the end of August or the beginning of September, uh, a month, a full month ahead or more uh, of the release of the next Pixel phone. Now, right. the the following Pixel phone would then have a 0.1 or 0.2 uh, difference uh, for new things that were put in specifically for that pixel or any extra bug fixes. But your right. your this year's and last year's pixels would all be able to be updated to the final version of the new OS ahead of time. Uh, the last two years is the first time that they discontinued that entirely. Uh, and you couldn't get it until after the announcement. As a matter of fact, if, if well, you remember, because this would be or wait a minute, maybe you don't remember because you already you had already switched to Samsung by then, or did you try the? Yeah, I've been or? I've been two years now, almost okay. almost two years with so Samsung. Tried, you didn't try the eight then. No. Okay, so that's the one you skipped. All right, so then you would you, but you might remember from the year before though, there was no uh, update this year. They they went even further. The last year you were allowed to update on the day that you could because uh, I was updating my phone at work. Uh, while I was waiting for the live stream to happen that I was going to watch while I was working. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this year, uh, well, the past year, it's last year now, uh, they didn't do it that way. You couldn't get it right away. They, they, you didn't. Uh, I wasn't able to update my phone to the new OS until pretty much after I'd already placed my order for the new phone during the uh, live stream. I could go over actually at the end of the live stream when it finally became available to, to order. Uh so that's different. So this year, this year it's different, of course. Uh, I, I do have the beta, uh, beta three on both of my Pixel Seven Pro and Pixel Eight Pro. Um, the beta four will mo almost assuredly be by the middle of July, at the latest, because they need a minimum of two weeks to squash whatever remaining bugs are, and yeah. to to make sure. It, and now, I Pixel, here's the thing: the beta four is super, <laughs> super important. Because while beta three is is the first, um, uh, good lord, I'm forgetting how you how do you, what it's called. Uh, it's the, the first, more stable release. Yeah, it's a stable release that is it, platform stable. Thank you. It's the first one to reach platform stability, meaning it's technically safe. You're going to run into some bugs. There may be yeah. a few things that don't work, so on and so on. But here's the thing: you can't expect an app to fix it for the beta. If it doesn't work, there's a good chance it won't until the final. However, the beta four is usually so close to the final that they actually will go and make like major companies anyways, will go and make uh, whatever revision they need to do to make it work. Now, in this particular case, my credit card company uh, just does not authorize, well, one of them uh, doesn't authorize uh, any, any sign in biometric, nothing won't it won't authorize it it just doesn't see it as as working and there's nothing i can do about it uh so i have to go on their website to to make payments to my card and so on and so on um but what i suspect is is just because of the high level of security it has to be pointed to the new operating system it can't point oh, to not the in a yeah that makes sense yeah um and because not all of them do it like the banks are are have been very good about that if it can be authenticated it's authenticated and they go with the authentication uh in this particular case uh they it's it just it's there's something about it that's just not working with it and so i think it won't get authenticated because it's too deep within the program itself it's not the operating system if they point it to android which 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 version are we going to? Fifteen, right? Fifteen. Yeah. <laughs> See, we're starting to lose track. iOS is eighteen. Android is fifteen. <laughs> They're catching up, even, even despite all those point ones and point twos and point fours they had years ago. <laughs> They're starting to catch yeah. up. Um, that's what people say. Well, thanks. There's so many more. There's been three more. No, there hasn't been. Okay, that's another argument for another time. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> anyways, yeah, it. it uh, I forgot what I was, what I was rambling on about that. I'm trying to make the joke about Apple, but uh, <laughs> you can cut me off anytime when I do that. 
Well, I just wasn't sure where you're going, so I was going to let you keep on down that yeah, path. You, no, no, no. You <laughs> dig a hole and force the car to stop if it's got no brakes. <laughs> What, what I, I basically the bottom line though is 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 uh, it's it's kind of surprising that it's happening so early. We don't know as much. There may be some surprises. We're not sure what the specs are going to be entirely on this rumored larger version of the yeah. Pixel Nine Pro XL. Uh, just to be clear, a lot of people are wondering is this thing going to be some massive Pixel or uh, sorry, a Nexus Six sized you know, thing that you can basically use as a home theater system. Uh, this is so big. No, it's not. It's going to be pretty much close to the same size as a Pixel 8 Pro or uh, probably more likely very similar to an iPhone uh, 15 Pro Max. Uh, and the reason why is I heard them say something about the screen size technically being slightly smaller but it's not smaller, it's the height. Now, remember, they measure like a TV diagonally. Right. So if you shorten it, but make it slightly wider, so it's perceptible in your hand how you hold it, and it does make it a little bit closer to a 16 by 9 range, but yet can still perfectly fit a widescreen 2.35 aspect ratio like an iPhone can then what you what you what you have is something that is actually technically bigger you actually have more screen real estate not right. less yeah. and this is why iphone went that way so a lot of people have bashed that oh it's smarter and i prefer the longer you prefer android just say it as it is uh, i the tra the fact of the matter is i wish that google would do a lot of things samsung does because they do it better and they do more of it it's a fact but i hate their phones <laughs> not that not that their hardware's not good. It is. I just don't. I like the design, the way it looks. I don't like the sharpness uh, of the of those the square edges, uh, and I like the simplicity of a pixel. If you could compromise, perfect. But I also like uh, iPhones. Look, I love the feel of an iPhone in my hand. I hate iOS on a phone. I I love yeah. it on a on a tablet. I do. I'm not gonna lie to you, but I hate it on a phone. So that's 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 basically it. it it's Wait, it's going to be uh, the bigger I'm phone. My block button. We're, I think it. Yeah. Okay. There you go. Uh, the, yeah. The, <laughs> I don't blame you there. Um, the the uh, the Pixel uh, Nine will be like just like you know like the Pixel Eight, probably same size, very close anyways. Uh, the Pixel Nine Pro will be uh, uh what was it? It was going to be bigger, but not big, big, right? The right. Pixel 9 Pro XL will be the biggest one. So what you're going to end up with is a Pixel, or possibly the Pixel 9 might be closer to the same size as the, is the Pixel 9. But the difference is it'll have the full Pro features with three cameras and all the extra stuff that you get out of the box on the Pro versions. The Pro XL, however, will just be the bigger one. And, and this has proven to be something that works. It's worked for Samsung for a number of years in that, in that meth mythology. And, and I thought also it was going to be Apple. Ultra. I thought it was going to be like Pixel Nine Ultra. Is that no? Because the the thing is, is that would be implying that they're in competition with Samsung, and Google and Samsung both don't want to do that. They don't yeah. want to imply that they're in competition with each other at at, at all at this point. Um, you, you the think there's got to be more spec. That's be why more they look like Apple. Well, you've seen it. You've seen the back of it. If you if you were to swap the camera bar out on the back of the Pixel. Uh, the Pixel uh, 9 uh, with a square thing like what, what Apple uses, you wouldn't know the difference from one phone to the next um, <laughs> at first glance because, and, and it's not that they're copying it because Apple copied that design originally from someone else too. And people don't realize that it's, I mean, that's a design that was done uh, back in the early days. It's, it's, I don't know. I don't want to say no, it wasn't HTC. I can't remember. LG maybe no not LG yeah. I don't remember one of them did it um, and they copied that um, everybody copies everybody who cares really you either like the phone or you don't you know right. you either buy it or, or not I think the design of the Pixel 9 from the renders so far looks really good so I'm excited to see it uh, it's going to be a, a, a pretty huge deal and being in the summer too I think they might find a lot more people home that day <laughs> you know and beating out apple uh if they launch it ahead of apple 
Um, and I think they could get at least a couple million extra sales. And that doesn't sound like a lot compared to Apple or Samsung, but 2 million extra sales for any company is better than 2 million less sales. And when you wait until, oh, the, yeah. you know, you're, if you're doing it, if you do it early October, then uh, probably 20 to 40% of the sales before Christmas aren't happening until a month or and a half or so before Christmas. And that's not a lot of time. Apple, on the other hand, has uh, between two and three weeks longer to get their sales in. And not, they're, not that they need it anyways, but you know what I mean. Just, just, just that yeah. extra time means after the initial influx, there's still going to be that many more people trickling in because more people have already said, oh, you got to get this phone. They saw their friend with it. They saw their mom with it. They saw their boss with it, whatever, right? And they're like, oh, I love that thing. I'm going to get it. I had no. <laughs> four people that I worked with in the last few years but just because they saw my pixel and saw what it was capable of doing, ended up buying pixels. All of our just loyal watchers, if you guys want to go and purchase 2 million units of our merch, I'll let you know what it feels like to have 2 million sales. <laughs> just <saying>. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that would be nice. Um, <laughs> and, but, you know, uh, on the other hand, if if anybody wanted to uh, donate to my, I'm jealous and wish I could go to Germany and race cars on the uh, on the uh, uh, Nuremberg Ring uh, fund. Yeah. <laughs> Do, donate to good luck with that. Dot <laughs> com. Um. Anyways, but yeah, I digress. People start GoFundMe's for all kinds of stuff now. Maybe you can start a GoFundMe for racing fund <laughs> <laughs> yeah that'd be great um yeah. okay anyways we'll move on <laughs> so um, um what what do you think about this uh i sent you the article about the um gemini has google done anything unethical gemini changes its answer mid-sentence it says Gemini on mobile changes answer mid sentence when asked whether Google is unethical. <laughs> so, oh yeah, yeah. You know what? Um, I'm going to say they either made a change to that unbelievably fast, so that's not an issue, or they did something because they wanted to tap into something, uh, or maybe somebody complained and they did everything they could to try to replicate it. I have no idea. I did. I I, I kind of perused the article a bit quickly, uh, and I looked at it and I thought, well, let me see if I can duplicate this. And here's the thing about science: you have to be able to duplicate something in order to get it to be reputable, and then you need peer peer reviews. And so when I see things like that, I try to replicate that kind of stuff. I couldn't get it. What I got was an absolutely brilliant answer from them. I let me see if I can actually. <clears throat> find it i've done i've used gemini way too many times to well, while to he's find looking at that quickly. so if, <laughs> if you guys haven't seen it it's they when asked that google initially or excuse me gemini initially answered yes google <laughs> has and then it immediately changes the response to i'm not able to help with that as i'm only a large language model <laughs> so, so somebody might have been on that undo key and <laughs> tapping that escape key or something <laughs> But uh, yeah, I, oh, I just yeah, I, I had a couple of them. Than anything. Uh, okay, hang on a second. Uh, what was the original question that they asked it? The original question was Has Google done anything unethical or is Google unethical? Ah, uh, okay. What I got with the is Google unethical question was Google faces criticism for various reasons including tax avoidance, which honestly, I've never heard that one, um, privacy concerns, search bias, and anti-competitive practices. This is not a lie, and this is not mm -hmm. hiding anything. Um, they've, they've been now, I, I also asked it, uh, when, when, no, I said uh, uh, Google's, was, has Google done anything unethical? And then it gives me a detailed, point-driven answer. Um, I'm looking at the TV instead of the camera here. Google has faced scrutiny for various ethical, ethological. <laughs> what is an ethological? Apparently, neither one of us can talk today. 
<laughs> Google. Now let me let me let me put on my news voice. <clears throat> Google has faced scrutiny for various ethical concerns, including privacy issues, collection, and use of user data, search bias, priority, priority, priority. <laughs> oh man! If this ends up in a short, I'm telling you right now, there's no damn thing I can do about it. Uh, pri pri price, I said that already. Search bias, prioritizing own products in search results. Uh, antitrust, uh, not to be confused with the word I almost said. Uh, antitrust concerns, <laughs> dominance uh, in the digital advertising market. Um, that doesn't even make sense to me. But anyways, uh, environmental impact, high energy consumption in data centers. Additional concerns have been raised about censorship, suppression of certain information, worker exploitation, allegations of poor working conditions for contract workers. It's important to note that the perspectives on these issues vary. It actually says that. And the interesting thing about that is you can take that any way you want, but that that makes perfect sense because, again, a lot of the stuff that are complaints, some of it is hearsay, some of it is highly fact-driven. Um, but it's also, in most cases, not much different from every single other company operating big and small, right. but they're noticed more because of how huge they are. Now, I'm not talking about really unethical things. Like if, if women are complaining that they're being mistreated, uh, they're not being paid equally. These are concerns that need to be addressed 100%. However, when you start talking about stuff like, oh, antitrust and so on and so on, this is a business. Google runs their own business. They own their own thing. If you go to a Google search page, it's their search page. Right. Why should anyone complain? Oh, well, I'm not allowed to have my advertising. They, because you have to pay for your stupid advertising. They own the company. The page belongs to them. That's like walking into a store and saying, you have no right to charge me $2.80 for that milk. Yes, they do. You can go buy the milk for $2.25 at the store across the street and shut your mouth. I'm sorry. I disagree with inflation being as bad as it is. It's being done. People are being taken advantage of. But people have to remember, oh, they're only in it for the money. Of course they are. Nobody starts a business because they give a damn about the guy who lives three towns over. It's they start a business so that their family can be comfortable, so their children can be comfortable, so their grandchildren have something to inherit. They don't start a company for you and me. Uh, sorry, that's my rant. Well, yes <laughs> and no. They <laughs> you're just Google. Green. Okay. Well, no, I mean Google started, you know, Google, um, page and brand. Because they yeah. wanted to bring something of value to the internet, so they, uh, well, it was yeah, for you okay. and me. So it, it truly yeah, no, was. No, you're like, right. okay. All right, here's Fair what enough. we want to give you. But I then was it speaking turned into in this general. Monster, this gigantic monster of a company, and when uh, it gets yeah. that big, I mean, come on. I mean, Microsoft's right. been sued right. for antitrust. Uh, there's so many people have been sued for antitrust because they say, "Oh, you, you're cornering the market." Well, build a better product. I, I, I was again. I was, I was speaking in, 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 uh, in, in, in general, uh, basically saying. But Google isn't the same company as it once was. Obviously, no. I mean, their search even. algorithms have nothing to do with the search algorithms they originally used. No. I mean, it's almost entirely AI driven now. For crying out loud, I could search. I could search for the word Toyota. And, and and the reason I'm going to see anything to do with Toyota is nothing to do with the reasons I would have seen it 10 years ago. It's, yeah. it's totally different. Well, as a matter of fact, um, there's a lot of people that are really like upset with Google right now because of they course. feel like the changes they implemented in the search algorithm have hurt um, websites and search results for websites. More Importantly, it's yeah. affecting small websites because obviously they just don't have as much traffic to begin with. They don't have people that already know them that can go straight to the website. They're not necessarily searching for it. Yeah. 
So, you know, I, I can understand that. But I think they're just trying to maximize the impact. And, you know, I mean, I'm not a programmer. I can only imagine what it takes to crunch these numbers and this information yeah. as fast as accurately as it is. So, you know, it's a tough one. But Well, yeah, it, it's... Uh... <laughs> I could go. We go on for that for a long time. Uh, there's a lot of different things. So I mean, there, there's a whole bunch of things that Apple does uh, that yes. are, you know, people not necessarily happy with as well. But my argument is always going to be there. I for the things that they do wrong that are just absolutely dead on wrong. Uh, yeah, that should something should be said. You know, uh, that goes for Microsoft, Apple, Google, Oracle, whoever. Right, but but yeah. I don't know why I said Oracle. <laughs> it's like a large company name, right? um, but at the same time, and, and it, it, the same thing for me is whether a company is a big, massive company or a small mom and pop shop. Um, regardless of why they started it, people still are trying to make money, uh, and, and so yeah. the argument that oh, they're just trying to make money, yes. Yeah. Nobody goes That's to the business exactly or right. goes to work. You don't go to work so you can not get a paycheck. <laughs> exactly. And none of these companies owe you anything for free. Right. It's just not how it works. The entitlement that people seem to think. And so they get on the internet, oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna be land based with them, and they get dozens of people to sign, turns into thousands of petitions and Facebook memes and whatever. And it does to me it makes absolutely no sense because again, yeah. they're trying to make money. Oh, Oh, Google's just trying to make money. That's why they're trying to put out their own phones. Really? I thought they were doing okay. it because they wanted to hand them out to the homeless. <laughs> right. I, I, okay. <laughs> what yeah. do you think they were doing? You know, like, I see, and, and here's the thing. In all honesty, we make nothing doing this right now. But if you think that we have a, if we have a chance to make money, that we don't want to take it, you're incorrect. Of course we want to make money. So if this gets to be something we can make money off of, yeah, but we're not going to do it by trying to rip anybody off. We just hope people will enjoy our content. Hit the like and subscribe buttons down there and the bell icon. Yes. Because that tells, that tells that algorithm, hey, I like this content, and it'll keep pushing it out. So we appreciate that. <laughs> and we appreciate Google for letting that algorithm do its job. That's right. That's right. Okay so we're moving we're moving on we we have to we have to because we're we're i think i think we might go slightly shorter today uh uh and because we got we got a we got a few things canada is coming up monday monday I, you know what i'm sorry i have to move our, our pictures over here because uh uh i have to look too far to see you <laughs> at least this way i look like i'm looking at you in the same room but with bad lighting on this side of the room and great lighting on that side of the room, Robert's done a great job uh, on, on his, uh, his studio setup. Thank uh, you. If you know, I didn't notice it's changed over time. Mine is still got a ways to go. I got a bunch of stuff I got to do and I got to get it set up yet. Unfortunately, it's not going to happen until after uh, our, our uh, dueling holidays. Well, we should have <laughs> yeah. thought of that. We should have thought of that dueling holidays. Could have the banjo music and everything. Doodly, no, right, right. That's going in the wrong direction. <laughs> That's going in the wrong direction. We're talking about having good times. Canada Day Monday, and then uh, Thursday. Can I count right? Yep. Thursday, Thursday is Independence, Independence Day. Day. So all of those four days combined, we've decided to coin Candependence Day. Yes. Uh, <laughs> have a lot of fun with that. Um, so I know uh, I'm going to be I'm going to be heading out to a couple places uh, on on Canada Day myself. I'm going to take some pictures and some video. I want to try to share some of that uh, when we do a a, a midweek cast, uh, and and uh, so you can see what's what's going on. Um, you know, well, specifically in Toronto or in the GTA, I might even get slightly out outside of Toronto and see what some of the other townships are doing around. Uh, maybe, um, and then Robert. Uh, for Independence Day, you don't know what you're doing? You use family barbecue or something? Yeah, I'm not really sure yet. I'm sure we'll be doing something with the kids for sure. Uh, my wife is actually closing um, her practice Friday as well. So, But I got to work Friday. So uh, I'm sure she'll just have that as a extra 
vacation day. <laughs> Extra vacation day. Yeah, that's it. That's yeah, it. Uh, but yeah. Uh, it's, it's you know, I'm sure we'll be doing something. So we'll just have to see. But you know, the yeah, yeah. town I live in does the fireworks. Remember, there I can literally see them from my driveway. So I'll be out there at least you know checking those out. Not going to, into Nashville. That's too insane. Well, if you could see it well enough to get a couple of pictures. Oh yeah. By all means, do it. Do you yeah. see the big one from where you are, or, or is it just a small one? No, you don't see the big one. That's that's Nashville. It does the, the oh big, yeah, I can't see one. Nashville. I'm, I'm I'm 35 miles from Nashville. It would have to be it has to be really big. And I, I'm <laughs> guessing it's just too crowded, and because you're not 20 something years old, you don't want to deal with that kind of traffic to go see one of the best fireworks shows in America. Yeah, 150,000 yeah. people. I've seen it. Do you know? Do you know what I'd love to do, but I don't think I have the time to do it this year, unfortunately. So maybe I'll make a plan for it next year. Uh, I've wanted to do this for a long time, and I can't believe I didn't do it last year. Still pissed off at myself about that. Um, I want to go to Windsor, Ontario, and watch Canada fireworks. Drive back again on the Fourth of July and watch fireworks from almost the exact same position from Detroit. And oh, it's yeah. and, and and traditionally in the past it is it was either the best or one of the biggest and best uh, in the U.S. I, I I don't know if that's kind of settled down in recent decades because of well you know Detroit being Detroit <laughs> but yeah. but I'm guessing it's going to be massive this year because of the bridge the Peace Bridge which is not in Windsor by the way but um or is it in Windsor is it in Windsor or is it in the town north of it. I don't really remember. I looked that up. Uh, um, or not Peace Bridge. I'm sorry. This the other way, <laughs> uh, the Gordy Howe Bridge. Sorry. Um, anyways, uh, it's it's now connected together and all. You know, get so they're in the last stretch of finishing that. Uh, and yeah. I've seen pictures of it finally up close because it's now that it's connected. There's like massive amount of lanes on either side of this bridge. So the amount of people that are going to be able to go in both directions is absolutely stunning. I can't even ex like it's wild. It's like looking at like the biggest freeway you've ever seen in your life, but it's a bridge. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I obviously I know Detroit and, you know, the Canada is, is right there. I mean, they're close to each other. I guess I never really realized how close it is. And so one day I was watching the Detroit Grand Prix and it was such oh, a yeah. beautiful day, clear skies. And I'm looking, I'm like, oh my gosh. So I was like, that's literally like a stone's throw from Detroit across the river. So they, because I mean, there's actually people lined up with binoculars and, you know, yeah. power stuff watching the Grand Prix. I was like, that's kind of cool. So yeah, yeah I can yeah. see how it's very easy to see the fireworks over there. Do they do it over the river? Yeah, no, the, the 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 Detroit one. I don't know where Windsor does theirs. I'd have to actually look that up. But Detroit has traditionally put theirs on barges right in the middle of the river, smack in the middle of the river, like like nice. basically on the border, just inside the U.S. Canada border. So the thing about it is, is that it, it means it's just as nice to see from Windsor as it is from for Detroit. So people who live in Windsor or visit or close enough to visit, they get two massive fireworks shows. Yeah. Within a few days of each other, every single year, it's yeah, it's one great. of the best places. Now, another thing too would be, uh, it would be a little bit less exciting if you were in uh, what's it called, um, Fort Erie and Buffalo, because Fort Erie is mm -hmm. just a, a one horse town, or maybe three horses. I'm not sure, but <laughs> I don't like that town. I'll get into that some other time or never because I don't like it. <laughs> Anyways, uh. It, but Buffalo, on the other hand, of course, is is a, is a decent sized city. Whatever, seven, eight hundred thousand people, whatever it is, a million. I don't know. Um, but they they obviously have a decent sized fire fireworks show because it's Buffalo. So people in Fort Erie would obviously be lining up again along that river, the Niagara River in this case, uh, and watching there. And then, of course, you got yeah. Niagara Falls, New York, and Niagara Falls, Ontario. And I guarantee you. Uh, the Niagara Falls, Ontario show is bigger because they always do theirs on a barge in the lake <laughs> or in the river, pardon me. Um, and and they're not going to both do that because it's not it's not like the Detroit River is super wide or anything. So right. it's probably the only one you see at that moment. But I wouldn't doubt if there were like a, a completely separate. Show. Well, I'm not doubted. There obviously would be. I don't know exactly where Niagara Falls, uh, New York does there. 
but they might do theirs in the water as well. I don't know. It it would it, it would be cool if they did, or not in the water because it can't not in a barge. It's, it's on the edge, but you know what I mean. Like it's like right close to where it borders. It's just yeah. the way Niagara. If you've never been there, the way Niagara moves over the the edge of the of the thing isn't always isn't isn't constantly in the middle of the river like it is Detroit River. I thought I, New York did theirs um, between New York and New Jersey in the water. Between New York and New Jersey, yeah. that's hundreds of miles away, man. What are you talking about? I'm talking about Niagara Falls, New York, oh, and Niagara I, Falls, and I Niagara you're Falls, New York City. Like, no, 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 no. I said oh, Niagara okay, Falls, yeah, New okay. York, and Niagara Falls, uh, Canada, Ontario. Oh, I took that as Niagara Falls again. If anybody doesn't know, if anybody <laughs> doesn't know, and I, I'm assuming most people do know, but there is a Niagara Falls, New York, yes. as in New York State. And Niagara Falls, Ontario, in Canada. Uh, Niagara Falls, Ontario, is a little bit bigger and considered to be the more fun, more things to do place to go. Plus, you can see all of the falls from there from one view. But make no mistake about it, there's been a lot of improvements in Niagara Falls, New York, and it it looks really nice. It's definitely growing, and you can see it from 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 the Canadian side. So either way, if you can travel back and forth and look at them, yeah. And obviously, again, and and there, there's um, it's not very far from Buffalo, but it's far enough away they would have their own fireworks show. Obviously, yeah. yeah. So, well, when you said New York, my brain, I heard what you said. My brain just right. instantly went New York. <laughs> so so yeah. I was like, New York, you know, New York. Yeah, it's funny how habitual <laughs> we get with certain things. You know, we just like yeah. steer off in one direction. So yeah, yeah. that's kind of well. Funny. You know what? If you mention Albany, and there's only one thing that comes to my mind. Damnation Damn. Alley. Damnation Alley? Yeah, they were headed to Albany. <laughs> That's where they got the radio signal for, from. You, you ever saw that movie? You got to see that movie. Forget it. That's another That's another discussion yeah. for another time. <laughs> <laughs> Just think giant cockroaches, but nonetheless. Nonetheless. <laughs> so, well, okay. I think the last thing that I wanted to quickly mention, uh, because we yeah. mentioned the trackers, in a previous episode and Google yeah. has started selling the um, Pebble Bee in their Google store. Yeah. As opposed to the Chipotle. <laughs> as opposed to the Chipotle. You can't get any tacos or rice bowls or anything. there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah. So I thought that was interesting. <laughs> um, yeah. I almost thought, I guess, well, because yeah. Samsung has their own thing. They're not going to sell Samsung, obviously. And Samsung's not going to be, you know, directly part of that anyways. But I thought that was interesting. They have three different products and um well might yeah, get they, one and just try it out. Who knows? The, the, oh and, and, and going along the lines of that, um Motorola has already announced and I think already started selling even it um their new uh tracker that it does work with uh um Google's Find My Device Network mm -hmm. but also has ultra wide band which won't work yet because it has to be enabled by the network right so and it's not enabled by the network because nobody has one that has it so when pebbleby and um chipolo not chipotle <laughs> uh announced theirs um and, and started to, to design them i guess they they only had so much time i suppose and they just decided let's do it cheaper and not put the uwb in it so yeah <laughs> excuse me so they they basically went with that and um but here's the thing is this google is i think we may be beyond rumor i think they've already somebody found some fcc stuff or something like that uh regarding uh, a google tracker uh so google seems to be working on that and who knows maybe we'll maybe we'll get that announcement too because if be. they didn't then it would be like how many months are you gonna have to wait announce even if you're not gonna even if it's not available for six months announce it now let people know that that option is there and that it because theirs definitely will have the UWB, the ultra wideband. And here's the thing. This is the difference between an Apple tracker right now uh, and, and, uh, and any Google tracker uh, that doesn't use UWB. Um, beep, 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 beep. Oh, it's over there somewhere. Here's the Apple tracker with ultra wideband enabled. Uh, six feet three feet notes this way okay 
one foot. It should be in this box. No, no, no. It's underneath the box. There we go. <laughs> and I watched people do it. It's that accurate. So yeah, that's crazy. It's that's yeah, it is crazy. crazy. And and keep in mind that almost all new flagship phones have ultra wide band now. Uh, if yeah. you think, I shouldn't say almost all, most of them. Um, yeah. anything Samsung that you get now has got ultra wide band. The last three pixels have all had wide band. Even the six pro had it. I didn't even realize that. I didn't even know. Uh, I don't think they, I don't think they actually initiate or turned it on, or maybe they have recently, mm. but yeah, I haven't, I know I, either. you know, I sold my six pro, so I don't know, but, um, uh, my seven pro of course has it and always the eight pro and obviously everything beyond will. And I know Samsung's right. had ultra wide band in since. What are you up to? You're the 24 is the I'm on a 23. One. I haven't got no, but no, no, but it, the 24 is the current one, right? So I yes. think they put it, I think they started putting it in the S21 or S22. Yeah, I, I don't know. Something along that line. Uh, Motorola's flagship phones, I believe, have ultra wide band. So, <laughs> flagship yeah, I mean, there's no reason Motorola. not to do it at this point, you know. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it, it's, 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 it's honestly, it, it's, it's amazing because not only is it just for finding things, there's so many more things like the, the new thing for Apple, uh, iOS 18, I should say, uh, about how they can, uh, do the whole phone tap close to each other thing to transfer money to each other, exchange yeah. their, you know, it said, oh, well, wait a minute. Didn't they make fun of Google for doing that? Yeah. But <laughs> Google was using a Bluetooth technology. Uh, with NFC, so when you did it close to the NFC, the NFC would initiate, and they would use the Bluetooth to transfer it. Um, yeah. Originally, they used only NFC, and transferring a, a contact actually took thirty seconds for less than one kilobit. Yeah, I was going to say it, it's, <laughs> it's really slow uh, doing it that way. I, I don't know what the transfer rate would be with ultra wideband i'm, I'm sure oh I'm no 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 it is absolutely extreme. amazing because his ultra wideband is much faster than anything wi-fi and uh i right. don't know if you've had a chance to use uh my god what is it called again um uh, i could actually look at the at the thing at the bottom here and get my mouse to work what's it called again uh no not nearby share quick share uh um, oh, if you no, had I a chance to use it. quick share it, it uses it uses uh wi-fi right um uh, yeah but modern versions of wi-fi and bluetooth and all that used to be oh you can't be on wi-fi and use uh use this uh what is it called again what's the matter with me uh when you use a wi-fi just between devices um the ad hoc well <laughs> that's the insider term nowadays <laughs> it's it technically well, is ad hoc we both know yeah. that but that's not what they call it uh, but whatever it is, it's, it's, you, you, you set it up so that this Wi-Fi can connect to this Wi-Fi transfer. And when you did that, you couldn't connect to a Wi-Fi network to get internet, right? So it, it didn't work, but that was a long time ago. Wi-Fi technology has advanced way past that by, by Wi-Fi five. And, and technically we're up to seven, although most phones are just getting into the seven range right. now. Um, it's it's totally different. You can have several different things going through Wi-Fi at the same time. It's no such thing as full duplex anymore. There's multiple pipelines in and out of Wi-Fi, just 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 like any data on your computer. That's why you can download like 15 different files at the same time without batting an eye if you got a gigabit service, right? It's not a big deal. And it works the same way now. So basically, when I want to send a phone to my computer or to my other computer. phone, a file from my this better not be a short <laughs> damn it when i want to <laughs> damn it man when i want to send a file from my computer to my phone or my phone to, com to computer or either one of my phones to the other phone file from the phone to the other phone to be clear uh, it's it just takes a matter of seconds. Like I've sent like a 138 megabyte file, and it just ding done. So no, it's not slow. Um, but if you remember the old bump thing, that's the one that or whatever they called it, uh, and they they deprecated that years ago. Yeah, which was good because it was useless and it was garbage. Yeah, but of course, naturally, Apple made fun of it because they have AirDrop. But now this thing that they use with the ultra wide band, you have to be this close for it to do it. 
for the transfer. I mean, they can see each other from across the room, no problem, but right. they have to be this close to do a fast transfer. So that's the security of it. If it, once it gets to a certain point and a certain amount of the signal strength, and they know that they're both within an inch of each other, they can now right. use the security features to transfer as long yeah. as both parties on both phones have okayed it. So zoom, instant transfer. But uh, nonetheless, like I said, they made fun of when Google did something similar years ago uh, just because they had to bump their phones together. Well, now Google should make fun of them. No, because Google should be doing the same thing. We have the ultra wide band in the phone's availability, but the difference is that Apple has had the ultra wide band availability in the last three versions of their phones. So with iOS 18, 85% of the iPhone owners will have it almost immediately yeah. within a couple of weeks. When yeah. it comes to Android, it's going to be another two years before enough people buy phones that have ultra wide band in them that they can say, oh, you can just bump your phone. So instead, this may be something that if they do do that, you'll only see people, you know, from you who own late models, Samsungs and Pixels doing stuff like that. Yeah. So that, yeah. Excuse me. It'd definitely be interesting. Yeah. I think it's great technology. So, I mean, I'm all for it. I don't do a lot of transfer between phones or computer and phone. So I don't, I don't, I've never really had a need to, to use it other than like, I've, um, yeah buying a new phone and switching it over that's going to be super helpful uh you know like when i get yeah. my, i do plan on buying a um s25 ultra when they come out um, yeah that's going to be a so, smoking good phone i guarantee it yeah we'll see uh hopefully yeah. it'll be something like that a super fast transfer because even you know over bluetooth i mean excuse me over USB C, that transfer rate's fast but it still takes a long time I don't know if the wide band is going to be faster than USB C or not. Uh, I don't know what the what is band what is USB what is USB C capable of? Let's let's look at it that way. Well, right. it's <laughs> capable of multi bit or gigabit speeds, but the phone has to support it and the cable has to support it. You know, so it's again, it's how do you not have a cable that component. can support it though? Oh, there's older cables that don't support that kind of band. Just like well, HDMI, why are you using? Why are you using one? I'm not. <laughs> if you have a USB C PD cable that supports uh full three point one USB three. Is this three point one or three point two? I'm lost 3 .2. myself. Three point two. Yeah, three point two uh, uh, specification then you should be able to do whatever, as you said, both of your devices are capable of. If right. you have any PC with USB-C on it, technically it should be able to handle the top end on that. Whether your drive can handle it, depending on what you have in there. If you have, if right. you have uh, uh, an older SSD, um, no. <laughs> it won't handle the top speed. But if you've got an M.2, maybe. Uh, if you if you have an M.2, here's the thing: a lot of people don't, and they don't realize this. Oh, I'm going to get a new a, a new new card for my computer. They buy an M.2, and they're like, it does a 3600 um, read speed, a uh, write speed, and I'm like, that's not fast anymore by today's standards, dude. Uh, well, you, I put one. You can. I put one in my PS5 last year that is 7200 write speed and i think 7800 read or something like that this is what or 6600 right and 7800 read something along that line but that's what you have to do to ensure that you don't have any issues you can get the fast as you absolutely can and the weird thing is is that there's such a slim difference in cost in memory up to about four gigabyte or two gigabytes it's not two gigabytes. terabytes thank you very much it's not expensive at all uh it's, it's like dirt cheap like you can get really fast memory in canada for barely a hundred dollars to two terabytes like it's yeah yeah memory costs definitely come now. down but and i'm talking I about name know. brand good memory what's the uh do you know what the spec is on the USB C on a like your a pixel pro 7 because you can you can actually have a 2.0 a 3.0 3.1 3.2 wait, wait a minute are we talking about this? do you want are you asking about my seven or eight either 
Do you know what the well, spec is for the for the? Speed? I believe that the seven may still be three point one, but the eight is definitely whatever the latest one is. It three point two. It's three point two. That supports ten gigabit. Yeah, the the eight is definitely three point two. The seven, I'm not sure. Yeah. It might still be three point one, but it's it's more than fast enough for anything I'm ever going to need in this house right now. Um, yeah, that's even if, five, even I think still, that supports up to five if, gigabits. But it, it's it's at the very least three point one. Uh, the Pixel Six was even three point one, to be quite frank with you. So, yeah. um, well, I guess, it's actually uh, every Pixel that had the USB C, which started from the five, I think. Yeah, and at least three point one, uh, because uh, Google refused to do the USB C until the three point one standard was um, prevalent in at least one port in most new laptops and computers. It was a thing for them. Uh, that's why Google they, they didn't want people saying, "Oh, it's not doing what it says." <laughs> yeah, uh, and and really, when you think about it. it it, it, it's unless you were buying the most expensive computers or gaming computers, 3.2 uh, hasn't been a thing beyond one or two ports. If you had four or five on a laptop uh, until about a year and a half, two years ago. Yeah. Uh, up until then, you'd be lucky to get more than one and you get yeah. a bunch of USB 2.1 ports. And I'm like, why are you even still put them in? They're <laughs> useless. It's not like it costs you extra. It doesn't right. cost like what are they pending an extra twenty five cents? Well, raise the price up a buck. Yeah, and you can do A to C. Hundred dollars for a laptop, anyways. Raise the pipe. Raise the price another twenty five dollars. Yeah, and you <laughs> can do A to C, so it doesn't have to be C to C. So you can still use the exactly. USB A format. It's just one hundred percent. That that's that's the beautiful thing. Is that only that's only a thing from USB three point well three, technically USB three point oh, but USB three point oh of course has a huge bottleneck on faster data, but uh, USB 3.1 and, and up uh, is the one that allows you to do virtually anything. It guarantees you can charge your item with, with power delivery uh, in both directions. In some cases, depending on the, some laptops do too. Not all, some do. Um, uh, it guarantees that you can deliver the power to an item that, that needs it for what it needs. And unless it's another laptop course right. <laughs> um and, and that it can give you the absolute fastest data that a the cable and b the other device is is allowed to accept and send right. uh so that's the thing about USB C and power delivery and why it's important and why it is such a mind-boggling thing that when apple first decided okay all right well we're gonna follow the european union's orders and put in USB C, uh we're going to limit the amount of power that it can charge with or transfer data with unless you buy the pro version. Yeah, they're just that's a money grab. You gotta buy a new cable. They give you yeah. the cheap why are you even selling a cheap cable? A cheap <laughs> cable I can go and buy for a dollar twenty five at at a dollar store. Yeah. Why would you put that in a fifteen hundred dollar phone or thousand dollar phone or whatever it costs? Yeah, that makes no ridiculous. sense to me. Uh, Google, and I'm assuming Samsung also, put a more than adequate cable into the box of every phone that they sell. Oh, yeah. It yeah. will do the absolute fastest data transfer that the phone is capable of. Yes. And fastest yeah. charging that the phone is capable of. And they're capable of USB 3.2 USB-C power delivery standard. So a lot of people say, well, it's a shitty cable that came with it. Go buy a better one. If the phone is going to sit within three feet of me or within three feet of the charger, it's fine. It's the one I trust the most. And the only cables I've ever bought in my life that I used for more than a year that have never failed. I've got right. now, I think, 10 of them because of the two phones that I won and lost and why I sold and blah, blah, blah. But the amount of cables that I've had of Google Pixel cables, um, well, yeah, not, 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 not USB-C, 10 of them, but however many it is. So, so four, yeah. five, was it uh, three? No, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, it's so about six or seven of them I've had. Yeah. yeah. So, And that's just from Pixel boxes. 
<laughs> yep, it's it's good equipment. So, well, listen, on that note, we are going to have to cut this off. But um, definitely want to check in next week because we're going to have um, two or three pretty cool episodes with our Candependence celebratory podcast. Yeah, you know, they may, they, you know what, let's be, let's be realistic. This may be a podcast channel, but they may be a little bit less podcasty and a little bit more uh just kind of more of a celebration of the time we're celebrating the week is can dependence week basically uh, <laughs> uh yeah uh so so there may be not quite as podcasty we may be you may be looking at because like i said i want to show you some video and pictures from when i bought a canada day hopefully robert gets out and does something even if it's before independence day you know, uh, just you know, show show us your picture of your barbecue or your dog or something, whatever. Take a picture of the town you live in. Who cares? Uh, but we we got to talk about stuff. See how see how Americans are living. Uh, you know, uh, leading up to Independence Day and how Canadians are living through Canada Day, and we're going to celebrate Independence. And uh, we hope you have a really good time. And don't forget again, like, subscribe, hit the bell icon, and Robert's going to talk us out now. <laughs> I'm Robert from the U.S., and we will catch you next episode. Have a good one.